Earlier today, 18-year-old Rebecca Morris from Hull was sentenced to 27 months for throwing bleach in the face of aspiring model Victoria Smith. It's the latest conviction in a series of so-called acid attacks, which it seems are on the increase. Naomi Oni, who suffered an appalling acid attack herself, investigates now for Crime Watch. My name is Naomi. I'm 23 years old and my dream is to be a professional makeup artist. But two years ago, my life was put on hold when someone threw acid in my face. Now I'm trying to find out about the rise of acid attacks in the UK. I'll be asking if anything can be done to stop this horrible crime. It is a hard type of crime to prevent because it's a cowardly act. And hearing from someone who, like me, suffered the devastating consequences of an acid attack. I do feel people look at me different. It's two years since a former friend followed me home in disguise and sprayed acid in my face. Since then, I've had three major operations and lots of cosmetic surgery. I lost my eyebrows, so I have to have my eyebrows tattooed. But I'm working again and starting to get my life back on track. Now I'm meeting Darren, who was targeted in a similar attack just eight months ago, when a complete stranger threw acid through his open car window. Well, when they attacked me, I was mainly my eyes, you know, I wanted to cover my eyes because I didn't want to be blind. Darren had full thickness burns over 10% of his body. They took that skin off my leg to rebuild my face. He had been sprayed with sulfuric acid, the same liquid my attacker used on me. I remember, you know, my face burning, but it wasn't like a burning like a hot, you know, it was, it was a weird type of like melting. They had to push you around in a wheelchair yeah. for a little while because you yeah. can't walk, you know? Yeah. yeah. My attacker has been found and has been sentenced. And I can't even imagine how it must feel for you to not even, you know, know who's done this. Like, I don't want them people to think that people can do this and get away with it, you know? It's like people say you've got to be strong, but you have to be strong every single day of your it's life. It's hard. This is one of the first times I've met another acid attack survivor. I remember after the attack feeling so alone and feeling very isolated. So it was lovely to catch up with someone and get to share similar experiences. When people talk about acid attacks, that covers any assault using a corrosive liquid, from sulfuric acid to powerful alkalis found in cleaning products. Figures which cover 2013 to 2014 show 130 people were treated in English hospitals for assault using a corrosive substance. That's more than three times the number treated just a decade ago. Specialist burn surgeon Baljit Dinza is on the front line of treating acid burn victims. Acid attack victims fall into two groups really, innocent victims or those who are involved in uh, criminal dealings where there's inter-gang or inter-group violence. Acid injuries cause devastating burns, usually they're very deep and can cause life-changing scarring and devastating injuries to the eye itself. Often patients have years of treatment and alongside the surgery and the, the, the scar therapy that they have, they'll also need significant psychological input. Some specialists are now using laser therapy, a new treatment which aims to reduce scarring. Darren has come to this clinic on London's Harley Street to see what they can do for him. Unfortunately, we have seen an increasing number of patients who are coming in for treatment of acid attack scars. And just this year alone, I've seen more than five patients. We do treat acid attack victims for free, but it's important that they understand that treatment is spread out over a fairly long time. We first met Darren back in September, and to date he's had three treatments, and we're thrilled with his results. He's had an incredible uh, response very early on. The trouble is, all this treatment takes years. In the meantime, we have to go out and face the world. This is a charity which helps people like me and Darren, who are living with facial disfigurement. Changing Faces offers two main services. There's the skin camouflage service where people can learn to use special cover creams. 
and then there's the psychosocial support where people can talk through their feelings and learn social skills and gain confidence. Yeah. It does, it covers it. You can still see it, but it does cover a lot, so yeah. yeah. It's great that there's so much help out there for people like Darren and me, but these attacks really shouldn't be happening at all. Sergeant Mike Carvert is investigating the acid attack on Darren. This crime is very serious crime. It destroys lives. Acid decanted out of its original packaging is very difficult to detect. It's very widely available, it's very easy to use, and it can have extremely devastating results. A small drop of this acid can burn right through all the layers of your skin. When people are caught in relation to offences of acid attacks, then I would want to see uh, very strong prison sentences imposed. I want them to be caught. They've done damage to me. They've took things that I can't get back. I just don't feel like that one sometimes, you know. My attacker was sentenced to 12 years in jail for what she did to me but I'll have to live with the consequences for the rest of my life. I think we need tougher sentences to stop people using acid as a weapon. Well, Naomi is uh, with me now, along with Jeff Shah, who runs the charity for survivors of acid attacks, and Sergeant Mike Calvert, who, as you saw in Naomi's film, is investigating that attack on Darren Pigeon. First of all, if I can come to you, Naomi, welcome and thank you for being a guest reporter, as it were, uh, you, for us. You. These attacks are premeditated. People have to think about it. They have to buy the stuff. They have to yeah. decant it. What would you say to anybody even contemplating this sort of attack? Um, I don't think it's something to think about. Um, this literally does destroy people's lives, you know, it changes, you know, someone's quality of life, um, the amount of surgeries they have to go through, the impact it has on you physically and also mentally and on the people's families as well. Uh, yeah, I want to ask you a bit about that psychological impact. We were talking about it before we came on air earlier this afternoon. I mean, you're here, you did that report, you're yeah. sitting in a live television studio. How are things psychologically for you? Do you, do you feel rebuilt? Um, I'm getting there, I'm getting stronger, yes. <laughs> I feel, feel, yeah, rebuilt, yeah. Uh, Jeff, we think there is an increase and possibly a significant increase in these sort of attacks. Your charity has done some investigations to, to try to just get some more specific figures mm -hmm. here in the UK. Tell us about that. Yes, we've commissioned a comparative law study um, covering six jurisdictions, one of which is the UK. Um, the interesting findings that have kind of emerged focusing on the UK is that, one, there's probably um, far, far too easy access to acid in the first place for would-be perpetrators, and two, is the fairly inconsistent sentencing by the part of judges um, on, on the perpetrators and the contributory factor is mitigating circumstances or factors. Well, let's talk uh, then, Mike Calvert, a little bit about the justice system. Naomi's attacker is now serving a long prison uh, sentence. What about uh, Darren, his, his attacker still at liberty, hasn't been caught yet. What can you tell us? Well, this was a totally unprovoked attack on an innocent young man. Uh, Darren was driving his car late at night through the Rayleigh area in Essex towards the Rayleigh Weir roundabout. He stopped briefly at traffic lights when he noticed a red Rover 216 containing a male and a female pulling up alongside him. But Darren didn't think anything of this encounter and when the lights changed he carried his journey on towards Thundersley. He drove for about a mile before he, drove, he turned right into a road called Kingsmere. Now Kingsmere is a dead end and uh, Darren intended on travelling to the end and to turn round but before he could do that he found he was boxed in by the same red car as before. Um, a man got out of that red vehicle, approached Darren's driver's side. There was a short verbal altercation, following which the man produced a small container, which he used to spray acid at Darren's face and body. After that, the suspect then threw a number of punches at Darren's head before making off from the scene. Now, this last part is significant because the attacker may have acid scarring on his hands as a result of those punches he threw. And in terms of a, a, a more of a description, do you have a good description of this? Yes, guy? we're looking for a white male in his 30s, skinny build with short, light-coloured hair. He was wearing a dark-coloured hoodie at the time of the attack. and um, We believe he may have been residing in the South Essex area as well. 
And just briefly, you're announcing a, a new reward in connection with this tonight. Yes, I can reveal a £3,000 Crime Stoppers reward for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of the person responsible for this attack. Well, thanks to all of you, and especially thank you to you for reporting thank for you. us, Naomi. Right.